Okay, so I'm gonna change change up a little bit here. Um, I probably could do the uh, Louisville Revolution videos. I probably could make that like a whole like long series. Uh, but I want to mention I had a pile of books here. I just need to kind of go through real fast. It's uh, I'm a German. My ancestry is German, and past just being known as a German, that it's never had any meaning to me. Uh, being white meant that I don't know who you know and where I come from, who I come from, and I only actually knew to my grandparents. So they had died young, so I didn't even I don't even really know my grandparents. Um, on my mother's side, so the group servers who come in 1869 were were from uh, Germany. They're from Bavaria, so they were Bavarian Germans. They left Bremen. They let, lived next to Munsterberg, uh, Otmar's Butcholt. That's where they actually came from. So studying German culture, it uh, seems ridiculous that we buy into this culture of ignorance, uh, this Confederate racist white supremacist culture of ignorance. Uh, when the Germans were such a powerhouse, and uh, one of the most important Germans, especially here in Kentucky, was William Goebel, William Justice Goebel. This is a book by Ch James C. Clotter, who wrote the definitive edition of uh, Kentucky history. Um, he uh, also wrote a book about William Goebel, the politics of wrath, and that's a, that's a picture of Goebel there, you know, cheering. So uh, William Justice Goble was one of the first New Dealers. He um, he fought against the Confederates. He uh, fought against the uh, the toll roll roads. There used to be tolls on all the roads, uh, but for par poor farmers and poor workers to get by, the toll roads were uh, draining their pockets of much needed finances. So he fought against that. He fought against the monopoly on textbooks. And so he fought against the monopolies. He fought against the moneyed interest. The uh, Constitution had a lot of anti-corporate, um, uh, I don't want to say rhetoric, but it had a lot of anti-corporate laws and legislation which were embedded into it. And actually it, it sets up a good defense against the United, Citizens United decision. Kentucky has laws on the books that can stand up against it because our Constitution was in, 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 uh, initially anti-corporations. Now a lot of statutes have undone a lot of the things that happened in 1891. Uh, but William Justice Goble was instrumental in making sure that the uh, uh, that the, there was anti-corporate language into the the uh, Constitution. William Justice Goble also made sure that there was a railroad commission, so that way that the railroads would be regulated and they wouldn't be cheating anybody over. So William Justice Goble, uh, he's a popular Kentucky only Amer American governor who was assassinated in. Uh, in this entire country, the only governor who's ever been assassinated. So I guess the presidents, uh, there's four presidents who were assassinated, um, but they're, I don't know, I mean, uh, you would think somebody having high power, I've heard sheriffs getting shot and other power holders getting shot, so it's kind of remarkable that the only governor who's been shot was out of Kentucky in 1900, and it was uh, a German Kentuckian. He was German. His mother was spoke fluent German, and he's, uh, he used to be Wilhelm, used to be his first name, but he changed it to, he anglicized it to William. He came out of uh, Pennsylvania, and he uh, lived in Covington, so he was a Kenton County German. And we're from Kenton County, so our ancestors would have known about William Goble. My German Griffshire ancestors would have known about William Goble, the Kenton County King, is what they called him. Kenton County King. Uh, the the uh, election law was supposed to be like, a uh, a controversial thing the election law was uh, the election law had it, the election law that Goebbels was trying to pass was to so that the uh, the professional corruptionist which is where I got that term from William Justice Goebbels but the professional corruptionist uh, did not have access to just take the election away he wanted a fair election so he created an election commission a bipartisan election commission and um, and that was a, considered controversial, but I think that was a good idea, too. So he was one of the first New Dealers. He fought for working class values. He fought for the people. He fought for uh, a, a brand new society, and that's why he got shot. The moneyed interest did not like it. The railroad people, Basil W. Duke and a lot of the old Confederate, uh, the ex-Confederate guard were pissed off about it in, the, in amongst the Democratic Party. He was a Democrat, too which most Germans were Democrats, just like most Germans were fighting for the unions. 
Most Germans did not live in the South. Most Germans uh, lived in Ohio and the Midwest. A few Germans lived in Cincinnati and Louisville. Not a few, but a substantial uh, number in Cincinnati and Louisville, but the rest of the South, uh, you could say that they were hardly even there. My Ger German ancestors were in Sanford Town, which is along the river on Covington, so the greater Cincinnati area. So that makes sense. They're close to the water. They're around other Germans. Um, this is another book. It's a fictional book by, um, uh, about William Justice Goebel by Howard McEwen. He's out of Bellevue, actually, uh, northern Kentucky. And it's called Wrath, the Life and Assassination of a United States Governor. Um, some, this ain't really related to the German thing, but Simon Gerdy, he's uh, the legend. He, uh, he fought for the Indians here on Kentucky's dark and bloody ground. So he, is, uh, he was fighting for the right side in hindsight. The, uh, here's a history book of Germany, 1780. 1918, so right before the Weimar Republic, right before the, uh, I guess, the Second Reich. No, I guess Hitler's the Third Reich. So this is 1780, for, so this is from, uh, hey, this is from a good, this is like before Germany would become Germany. <laughs> I don't know, a lot of good information in this, but it's got about Otto van Bismarck in 1871, which was the important part for my family's history. Otto van Bismarck become uh, the German Chancellor who unified Germany in 1871, and my ancestors came to Castle Gardens, not Alice Island, but they came to Castle Gardens, which is another place, an immigrant spot off of, uh, uh, I guess, Manhattan or New York, and then in uh, 1869. So two years before Otto van Bismarck uh, unified Germany, so before Germany became a country, which is, means that we're Bavarians and we're not Germans. Group servers are Bavarians, and they are not Germans. They're German-speaking people. They have the, the ethnicity and the language and the culture of the German people, but they were Bavarians before uh, there was even a Germany. So they would have been Bavarian when they got here. Otto von Bismarck had three wars right before he unified 1871. So the warlike Prussian state that was trying to conquer everything had, I would say, had a lot to do with them moving out and getting out of Dodge. Um, especially since they risk the Atlantic, they risk the brand new, um, the brand new, you know, shipping technologies in order to, you know, look for a better life in in the in the new world, right? So you had the wreck of the Deutschland, the wreck of the Deutschland. This the Deutschland is the actual ship that my ancestors had used. So the wreck of the Deutschland is by Sean Street. And in 1875, the Deutschland wrecked off the coast of Germany, right off the coast of the Kentish, Kentish Knock Shoals, uh, which is off the coast of England. So the very boat that the Gripschovers, Johann and Katharina Gripschover, got on, the very boat that they sailed to America in 1869, crashes six years later. And a lot of uh, German immigrants had froze to death and died, including five nuns. Uh, which made the wreck really famous, especially since this priest had wrote a book or wrote a poem called The Wreck of the Deutschland. And this book is just the uh, critical analysis of that poem. So this is a lot more words on top of the words of the poem that was written. So the poem was, uh, you know, popular. I haven't actually read this, but this is uh, the, uh, the, you know, the interpretations of how they read the wreck and just something that the the sisters had said, you know, oh, Christ, Christ, come quickly. So they were praying and they were hoping that they, their misery would be knocked out so that way they wouldn't have, uh, you know, they wouldn't die a painful death. So the, it was an old rickety boat, an old propeller, uh, a propeller boat that had wrecked in the ocean, just like a Titanic. So that could have been the, my German ancestors. We could have died. So in order to get out of a bad situation in order to risk that chance. I mean, what would it take to take five, five or six children? I want to say six. Man, how do I not know this? Five or six children along with themselves and cross the Atlantic. Why would they do that? Why is it the promise of America was so great, or was there a push factor and there was too much military and too much oppression and not enough opportunity and they just wanted to get the hell out? 
the three oldest boys were in their teenage years, so that's right up the age where they would be uh, conscripted, and uh, some military would take them over. If it wasn't the Prussians, then it would have been somebody else, the Bavarians. Um, the last two books I have is uh, books on German Cincinnati and Ger uh, Louisville's Germantown and Schnitzelberg. They, uh, it's, it's relevant because the Cincinnati is where my ancestors are closer from, the Germans from Cincinnati, but Louisville also had a substantial number of Germans, so the Ohio River was important, uh, you know, I guess the Pennsylvania Germans, uh, to, to settle here. But German Cincinnati, a couple things about, well, a couple things about both of them. German Cincinnati's got Over the Rhine, Over the Rhine, which is now predominantly a black area, a poor black area, which is similar to Louisville's West End. Uh, it seems like a lot of American, major American cities has their ghetto, and that's the main ghetto of Cincinnati is Over the Rhine, and here in Louisville it's the West End. And so the uh, Over the Rhine, it's, it's significant to know that because Over the Rhine is a German name, Over the Rhine, which is named after the Rhine River, Over the Rhine River is uh, where the name comes from, and it used to be Germans who lived in Cincinnati. In 1855, there were riots, just like in 2001 in Cincinnati, there were riots. And the, the riots in 2001 lasted for three days. And the riots in 1855 with the white people, right, the real white people, the real Protestant, Anglo, uh, Anglo Puritan nativists who were against the Catholic Germans, against the Catholic Irish Germans, they were riding against them. They weren't allowing them to vote, and they were standing up against them. They thought that they were uh, drinking too much on Sundays, and they were having festivities, and they had picnics, and they were more open, and they weren't they weren't like uh, you know us whites, right? The Germans were not like the the uh, us whites. So the Germans were being treated like you know like kind of like how the Mexicans are today. They're speaking a different tongue. They were staying in a different area. They're uh, the native white people was scared that the Germans were going to take their jobs, so they had all this racism against uh, the Germans. So, again, that uh, also happened in 1855. So, 17, 1975, you had a white power riot. You had all these black kids trying to get into the poor schools, and Louisville's white people standing up, and they protesting finally, right? But some dumb racist shit, that's when they fucking stand up. They don't care about the democracy of the war. They don't care about stolen elections. They don't care about... Any of the professional corruptionists in government and the corporatists who are taking over our, our state and our economy and all of our wealth, they don't give a damn about that, but some black kids are going to school and they fucking get all pissed off about it. Well, they got the same amount pissed off in 1855 here in Louisville. White people didn't like the Germans. They didn't like the Irish. Fucking white people said that they weren't white enough. The Germans and the Catholics, they had different morals and they spoke differently and they had different ethics and they did things differently. Where the Protestants had... The women just do whatever, you know, just uh, have a freelance life. The Germans were having women who had a hard work ethic, and they were fighting right there alongside their man. Um, uh, the Germans brought Christmas and New Year's and hamburgers and hot dogs, and they had, you know, beer. They are very known for their, their beer gardens, and their uh, Coors and Budweiser are German. Uh, Germans started out being German companies. So... That's both uh, Cincinnati and Louisville had a high German culture. Even on this book here, this picture right here looks identical to my cousin John. He looks identical to my, my cousin John. So this is what the Germans look like here. This is Schnitzelberg, Germantown and Schnitzelberg, which are German towns. And I've gone over to Germantown, and really there is no, there's no more Germans in Germantown. It's all a bunch of white people. So the culture of Germans have basically been wiped away. Now, I've read the, that the folks who still have the German tongue, who still speak the German tongue, their families are tight-knit, they're still together, they've still got solidarity. So it's those people who lost their German language is the ones who've lost their way. If you're still speaking the German language, um, then it's most likely your families are together. Here's um, the uh, Fountain Square out of Cincinnati. So Fountain Square was built by a German. Uh, you had this is I mean it's a really good book the the Catholics the Germans are also known to bring Catholicism with them so they were mostly Protestants here mostly Baptists so the Baptists didn't like the Catholics so it was a it was an anti white it was basically white on white anti Christian Christian white Christians versus white Christians one group of white Christians were saying another group of white Christians weren't white Christian enough that's what the white nativists were saying to the Germans and to the Irish and you know what when I think about how the Germans have accepted this 
uh, this rural culture of being free and independent. I can see a lot of similarities, but I, um, I think we need to maintain our, our culture, heritage, and history. We should know who we are. And when you confederate, uh, some of you, my confederate cousins say, well, you don't know your history. Well, they don't know their history. They don't know their heritage, culture. Uh, or history, and if they did know their heritage, culture, and history, they wouldn't be Confederates. Uh, but you know, they're against reading, so you know, what do they know?